hit. So you see now compensation in numbers. So that's literally to now work with numbers instead of working with a graph. Huh? So remember, normal ACO2 of 40, bicarb of 24, and pH of 7.4. Of course, give yourself some uh, leeway around the PCO2, you know, 35 to 45. Of course, your bicarb about 20 to 28, your pH about 7.3 to 7.5. But let's put this as our central portion. So, Al, since it's a diagram, we're able to identify the condition as mixed acidosis. But if the condition is given not as a diagram, but as words, since the bicarb is within the normal range, how would we know that it's mixed and not just respiratory acidosis? So, Al, that's why we're about to do it in numbers. But you would already know. And you know why, Al? Recall, if CO2 is increased, then if CO2 is increased, pH goes down. But bicarb should have increased. It should have increased by 1 milli equivalent per liter for each 10 millimeters of mercury increase in CO2. Therefore, at 24, bicarb is too low. Not only there's high CO2 for the acidosis, but there's also low bicarb for it. A bicarb of 24 is a low bicarb when PCO2 is elevated. You understand, Al? So let's try compensation in numbers. So you remember that for compensation, respiratory is fast, metabolic is slow. So first, let's do respiratory compensation of metabolic disorders. Remember, it takes minutes. So it's very fast. And first one we're going to do is a metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis, you have a low pH because you have a low bicarb. Well, at full compensation, at full compensation, PCO2 should equal one and a half times the bicarb plus eight. That's called winter formula. It's a formula to memorize. Basically, what we're trying not to do, we are trying to avoid henderson hasselbach equation. You know, we want to avoid it because henderson hasselbach it tells me that pH is the pK plus the log of the bicarb concentration divided by A times PCO2. And A is literally 0 0.0301 and the pK is actually at 6.1. And just looking at this, uh, I'm about to have a heart attack. So the whole idea is let's not use Anderson Asselbach. And because we have a very short range of pH changes beyond which or below which we would die, we can consider it's linear. And that allows you to come with little formulas. So indeed, uh, give or take one or two millimeters of mercury because it's really an assumption, an abbreviation, if you want, a, a simplification of using Henderson Hasselbach. So look what it means. Let's take an example. Let's say I have a pH less than 7.4, secondary to a bicarb of uh, 40. Is that okay? What it allows me to do is to know that at full compensation, the PCO2 would be one and a half times 14 plus eight. 
So would be around 29 plus or minus 1 or 2 millimeters of mercury. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to make an arrow showing you your PCO2. I'm going to remind you that it used to be at 40. I'm going to tell you if it goes at 29, it's a full compensation when your bicarb is at 14. Therefore, if I'm anywhere between 29 and 40, maybe I'm at 32, what am I going to be able to say if PCO2 is at 32? Am I fully compensated, partially compensated, or do I have a mixed disorder? 32 for PCO2. What would you say? Anything between 29 and 40, you have partial compensation. What if your bicarb was below 29? Uh, your PCO2 was below 29. What if PCO2 was 20? Then that's beyond full compensation. It must be a mixed disorder. If it didn't move from 40 or it's higher than 40, it has to be a mixed disorder. Only between 40 and 29, I'm looking at the compensation and eventually the fully compensated state. So you tell me on the left here, if PCO2 was lower than 29, it would mean I blew out more CO2 than normal. It would be a mixed disorder with what? The respiratory acidosis or respiratory alkalosis? Mixed with what? That's right, Ala. It would be mixed with respiratory alkalosis. Whereas if the PCO2 is above 40, it would be mixed with a respiratory acidosis. You understand how the equation now allows you to argue your patient's number? Because like this, if you see 14 milli equivalent per liter of bicarb with an acidotic state, so you have an assumption of metabolic acidosis, calculate what PCO2 would be at full compensation. It should be around 29, around 30 if you want. Well, if it's beyond that, then you know that it's not going to be a full compensation. Between 40 and 29, it's in the process. If it's below 29 or above 40, it's a mixed disorder. That works for the first one. So we just have three more to do. Uh -huh. So how about a metabolic alkalosis? Maybe I'm vomiting a lot. In a metabolic alkalosis, I have a high pH secondary to high bicarb. And of course, PCO2 must increase to compensate. So how does this one work? Oh, at full compensation, well, there's a little recipe you can come up with that will help you assess this. PCO2 increases by 0.7 millimeters of mercury for each 1 milli equivalent per liter increase in bicarb. So let's try an example. If I give an example here and I tell you I have an alkalosis because my bicarb is not at 24, my bicarb is at 34 milli equivalent per liter. In other words, plus 10 from normal. From the normal 24, 10 milli equivalent excess. 